The European discovery of the Magyar era occurred in tandem with the very beginnings of the dynasty. European diplomats, travelers, merchants, and technical experts began the long trek to Tehran as early as the reign of Fatah Shah. They left numerous accounts of their impressions and conclusions colored by Orientalist perceptions and imperial ambitions. They regarded Iranian art as a butterfly to be collected, pinned to a support, and displayed for the pleasure or disdain of the collector's gaze. This body of knowledge presented Iran as different and inferior and formed the initial basis of Qajar studies. But today, we recognize that Qajar Iran saw itself in and of the world. Fatari Shah disseminated his image to the courts of Europe and Asia. Iranians were educated in France and Germany. And Fatari Shah himself negotiated with European powers as an equal. This engagement with the world increased exponentially with his successors, particularly Nasrin Din Shah, with one great difference. Fatali Shah considered himself equal or superior to any other ruler, whereas his grandson was very well aware of his ambiguous position in relation to the great powers. An example of the change in our scholarly perceptions of Qajar Iran is the case of Nasruddin Shah's museum in the Golestan Palace. Described in colonialist travel literature in disparaging terms as a collection of bric-a-brac, Today, we can propose another reading as a local Kunstkammer, which displayed the knowledge and wonders of the world proudly. Qadar studies proper began in the 1970s, when European and Iranian scholars published numerous historical and art historical studies of the field. Previously, the 19th century was treated as a stepchild in European and Iranian art history. Qadar art which was considered neither Islamic nor modern, did not fit into either narrative, a perception from which it still suffers and which I strive to address in my work. We may cite Anne Lambton, Iraj Afshar, Mansur Etihadi Nizam Mafi, Feridun Adam Yahya Zuka, Muhammad Ali Karim Zadeh, Ada Adamova, and last but not least, Basil Robinson, among the pioneering scholars of art and studies. In Iran, the Negaristan Museum of 18th and 19th century Iranian art was inaugurated in 1975 under the auspices of Fatshah al Farah. The formation of the collection was at once a response to the Orientalist tradition of Qajar studies, as well as an act of nationalism. It was a repatriation of these paintings since the collection was acquired from the British diplomatic family of the Amrys, who had uh, collected the works in the Middle East, in Turkey, and um, Egypt in the early 20th century. This action and the founding of the museum also responded to Iranian intellectuals and government discourses on the importance of Iran's authentic culture. We began with 63 paintings and a few hundred artworks, and in the space of four years, it closed in 1979, the collection had increased to 3,000 objects, which for the most part have now been dispersed and we do not know the location of. These accomplishments laid solid foundations for the field's progress in the later 20th century. Now imbued with more rigorous historical methodologies and new ways of reading, influenced simultaneously by postmodern literary and gender theory, a new generation of scholars emerged. Abbas Amanat, Afsan Enaj Mabudi, Mohammad Tabakoli Tagi, among others in the realm of art, royal Persian paintings, the Qajar epoch, an international traveling exhibition organized in 1998 by myself and Mario Mekhtiar, presented a carefully curated vision of the arts of the era, bookended by Safavid and the constitutional period. The show was said to have created a new field of art history. The exhibition was accompanied by numerous conferences and publications and led to the creation of the International Qajar Studies Association, 
which flourished for almost two decades under the leadership of Mount Cheris Kandori Qajar. Unfortunately, although Royal Persian paintings traveled to Los Angeles and London, it was not presented in continental Europe. So where are we now? This lacuna has now been filled in the 21st century by the exhibition L'Empire des Roses, which returns to the topic with an expansive treatment. 